Yeah, but still, this is this this opening speech was weird. And look at Ryan Clark. Y'all know who Ryan Clark is. He's the race bait. Oh, y'all don't know who Ryan Clark is, man. I'm gonna show you who Ryan Clark is, man. Ryan's son Jordan and two of his Arizona State football teammates say they were called a racial slur at a Whataburger near campus. Now, due to the pandemic, this is what happened. The drive-through was the only way to order. Jordan Clark says they asked a woman driving her car if they could give her money to buy food for them. She said no because she was in a hurry. Another customer agreed to buy it for them. But while they waited for their food, Clark says, quote, the woman that, that we asked initially eventually got to the window and proceeded to roll down the window to ask what our problem was. We were sitting on the wall. She then filed a complaint. Yeah, I mean, it's a bunch of sun turds standing on the wall at, against the drive through near the window. That's not normal. Right? Definitely not normal. It's normal for yeah. some people, but not for the average person. Sure. I, ain't, I don't see that. I ain't even gonna lie. I be in the, I be in the community all the time. I don't see that. Sons don't just be standing in the standing by the window. Four or five of them standing by the window and shit. When you come up to drink. Oh hell no! Oh no! Hell no! <laughs> um, that was alarming. That was alarming. That's why that woman probably asked, like, uh, probably looked at them. But it gets better, though. It gets better. And the drive through <laughs> was the only way to order. Jordan Clark says they asked a woman driving her car if they could give her money to buy food for them. She said no because she was in a hurry. Another customer agreed to buy it for them. But while they waited for their food, Clark says, quote, the woman that, that we asked initially eventually got to the window and proceeded to roll down the window to ask what our problem was. We were sitting on the wall. She then filed a complaint with the manager that we harassed her and we and he comped her meal. She then turned to us and said in a vindicated voice, she said, thanks for the free food and word. Now Clark goes on to lie. The bullshit. <clears throat> bullshit. Bullshit. And whatever she said, I believe her. No bullshit. I, I ain't trying to like try to stick up for the lady, but I believe her. Like she needs to go complain. And because you know, you know, I hate when people say caring and all shit. You know that lady ain't gonna complain for no goddamn reason. She's seen five dudes standing. It doesn't matter like how she felt. It's five dudes, like you said. That's strange for five dudes to be standing there in a in a, in a um the drive through. I'll go ask a question like, "Yo, what's up with you? yo? Y'all good? Like, y'all y'all trying to rob rob my mother for the grub or some shit? Like, I don't know what's going on, bro." Yeah, so she complained. So there was obviously a dust up because they're breezing. These are young kids. These kids are college kids. Ryan Clark's son was in college at this time. This is a few years ago. So he's not going to tell the whole story. He's just going to say, you know, the parts that make him look like the victim. Um, her and, we, and he comped her meal. She then turned to us and said in a vindicated voice, she said, thanks for the free food and word. Clark goes on to say <laughs> the store manager gave her the food. She began to dry off, drive off while saying bye and word. The manager was unfazed. He was quick <laughs> no to camera? condemn us and tell us we were wrong. Quick to th So the manager heard this woman calling them the N-word and then condemned them. <laughs> That's just not how the world works. I'm a black person. Man. <laughs> the world, man. It doesn't go like that. These fairy tales these goddamn jim crow fairy tales sun words tell you yo people are when you're a sun team because this sun plays football and these are all these guys were football players so they're like you know big strong guys and shit um little old white ladies don't really come at you like that man now, yeah, she may have called them. She may have gotten the manager. Yeah, but they're not like calling you in words unless they hell no. They gotta be hell drunk. no. <laughs> Real shit. Real shit. Yeah, Real yeah shit. they gotta be drunk and don't give a fuck. Um, but this, this this whole notion that like, you know, big strapping black men are just getting chased around by little old white ladies called Karens. It's, it doesn't, it's not like that. That's not how it goes in real life. In real life, if you're a black guy, 
people give you five feet. They give you three feet. They open the door for you. <laughs> if you walk up to the line at the same time as a white person, 100% of the time, the white person will say, go ahead. 100% of the time. White person say, you got it. I say all the time, facts. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, white people don't give you no static ever. And I'm not talking about like, as like a punk type thing, but it's just like they're different. They don't have like pride about every little thing and like that. Now sometimes it's some punk shit they scared, but a lot private of times, property, like private property, yeah. like something like that. Like private, I think that's the only time like they care like to come fuck with you like, when it's like pri private property, their property or property that they live on. Like other than that, I don't think like they complain about shit. They don't care about. They don't give a fuck about something, man. Yeah, and, and 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 they and they're very like they're very nice and respectful because they don't have that. They don't have to be tough. Like if you're a white person, you don't have to be tough. Like it doesn't get really get you anything. Whereas a son, man, we being tough and you know, rude and shit like that. That gets status. us. That's yeah, status. it gives us something. They don't get nothing from that type of behavior. Um, so it's like. <laughs> And especially with a, to doing it against a black person, like yo, you can lose so much. So I mean, this his son, Ryan Clark's son, is I think this story is bullshit. Not Real that shit. it didn't happen, but the way he's saying it happened. Yeah, yeah, facts. She then turned to us and said in a vindicated voice, she said, "Thanks for the free food." N word. Now Clark goes on to say the store manager gave her the food. She began to dry off, drive off while saying bye. N word. The manager was unfazed. He was quick to condemn us and tell us we were wrong, quick to threaten us and say he'd call the police. Now, so now some white lady, some <laughs> has called him the N-word a bunch of times. Now the manager's like, yo, you guys are doing the wrong thing. You, you were bad and this was all your fault. And I'm calling the cops. What were they doing? Let's just say that is true. Let's let's say that it is true. That's what happened. Not not the N word part, but what the manager said. Mm. Yo, do you know how much of a five strapping black dudes for a man <laughs> to come out of the store? That story. That story doesn't make sense. That story doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, I'm an old head man, and I'm and I'm not saying white people are afraid of me. I'm saying that they can feel the energy. They know I vibrate on a different frequency. They know I have a different frequency. They know that I can charge up faster than they can charge up. Exactly. I can, I can go from calm to prison, uh, life sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's not life sentence. Some, you know, some, man, can, some man can go from calm <laughs> To life sentence in two two seconds, man. <laughs> Real shit. Take, Facts. It take them a while. They gotta go home, write a manifesto. <laughs> and shit. It takes take them a while. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think white people just know that we operate with a different frequency and they no feel it. No facts. You know, and you know what it is? It's like I'm not I, no bullshit. I think you're right because like all my life, it's like every time I've been around gliders, it's like they try to feel the temperature in the air and they know like. Okay, we know this guy is gonna. We know the people are gonna do this, so we're gonna stay to this level. I swear to God, it's like every time I go yeah. around white people, it's like, hey, how you doing? They hold the door for you. They beat. They, I, I swear to God, every time I be around gladys, they always nice. But I'm not saying that the they're assholes, nice. man. Yeah. They just always nice. Like, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Hey, like holding doors and shit. I be way downstairs. They hold the doors open. I'm like, small hey. talk, small talk. Get <laughs> that door for you, both. Show sure is nice to see you today. <laughs> Real shit. Yeah. They nicer. They way nicer than some people. And now a lot of some people are nice. You know what I'm saying? But it's different. Like some people, you know, shoot the bully bobo with you and shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, some, you know, you get to some people that are, you know, really nice and to whatnot. Don't get me wrong, but like all gliders. Are nice. All of them is shit. Salute the product of Cook County, man. Yeah. Get the likes up, man. Marvin Law, he says, why they didn't just order their food inside? Well, it was it was it was COVID. 
So at that time it was COVID, and I'm gonna let it play through for a minute too. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop it for a second. I want I want everybody to hear what what happened because it's go, it gets crazy. But turn now to an important story to tell, one that's very personal to our friend Ryan Clark. Ryan's son Jordan and two of his Arizona State football teammates say they were called a racial slur at a Whataburger near campus. Now due to the pandemic, this is what happened. The drive-through was the only way to order. Jordan Clark says they asked a woman driving her car if they could give her money to buy food for them. She said no because she was in a hurry. Another customer agreed to buy it for them. But while they waited for their food, Clark says, quote, the woman that, that we asked initially eventually got to the window and proceeded to roll down the window to ask what our problem was. We were sitting on the wall. She then filed a complaint with the manager that we harassed her and, we, and he comped her meal. She then turned to us and said in a vindicated voice, she said, thanks for the free food, N-word. Now Clark goes on to say the store manager gave her the food. She began to dry off, drive off while saying bye, N-word. The manager was unfazed. He was quick to condemn us and tell us we were wrong, quick to threaten us and say he'd call the police. Now, Whataburger has released a statement saying, quote, we do not tolerate racism and we're horrified to hear how these customers were treated by another customer. We are reinforcing training with our employees on how this incident was handled and apologize to the players and their families for this terrible experience. Ryan Clark is back with us. Ryan, to see this happen to your son, you know, I don't mm -hmm. even want to ask a question. You're a member of our family here. The floor is yours. Yeah. Well, I think um, you initially, the first thing is, you know, as a black man, and the father of a black young man, I'm happy he's alive. Period. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, <laughs> kill his ass. Wow. Bro, these people are so dramatic. Like, calm down. Like, like he just came from Iraq or something. What what a he bitch for not wanting to, you know, take a five random sun teens orders and money in the middle of the night and interrupt what you're doing and do all this shit for them. Like that's fucked up. For real. <clears throat> you know, it's equivalent. Now, don't get me wrong. I will tell you one time, but one way glider show up in traffic. Like a glider will give you the finger and speed off in on, on highway, on traffic, or yell something out the window. But on foot, you rarely get any fucking problems out of gliders, man. You know, I don't mm -hmm. even want to ask a question. You're a member of our family here. The floor is yours. Yeah. Well, I think... Um... You initially, the first thing is, you know, as a black man and the father of a black young man, I'm happy he's alive. Period. That, that was <laughs> that was my, my first thought. And then that immediately turned to anger. And what's crazy is I wasn't mad at the young lady or the woman. I wasn't mad at the manager. I was mad at myself. I was mad with Jordan. And I'm not necessarily sure that that's the right emotion to have, but nothing pisses me off more than being scared. And even though I knew the moment was over, I was still in that moment as his dad. I was still picturing, as I'm reading it, I'm still picturing, picturing what's going on and I'm playing out other scenarios in my mind. I'm playing out a scenario of if this woman would have had a weapon and she could easily say that these three young black men were threatening her. One of Jordan's friends is a tight end. He's extremely tall. He's a thicker kid. And I believe that if that... This yeah, story is completely bullshit. It's all bullshit. <laughs> the Karen pulled, peeled out of the driveway and spun on the Sun teens who were just doing nothing wrong. Yeah, for no reason. She just shot him. Bro, get out of here. While screaming the sun word. Well, on camera, because I'm pretty sure there's cameras in front of the whatever, um, establishment they, um, they're at. Yeah, yeah I, show the video. Meal, I know they got cameras. Yeah, of course. They got. She got her meal comped. After she got her meal for free, she still called him the sun word a bunch of times and then was going to shoot them dead. And then just, you know, that that's just a normal, typical reaction that tall unusually tall muscular black men have with white women on a daily basis <laughs> and mind you they all got cell phones <laughs> mind you they all got cell phones 2024 like the first time they had the, the i'm pretty sure one of them would have whipped their phone out oh she's talking crazy to us like come on this is 2024 man cut of it out course. 
of course. And and think about it like this: this react, this 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 interaction took a while. They they asked her, could they could she pay, could they give her some money to buy their food? She said no. Then they asked another woman. Um, she said yes. So then the, the line moves up. The woman gets to the window. Some kind of um, disturbance happens between her and and them while they're standing right there by the window. And then the manager's called. The manager has to hear her complaint, then comp her meal, and then get her meal, and then she calls her in the sun where that's a long time. That sounds like about 10, 15 minutes at the very least. And nobody pulled out their phone. Facts. That's Good a point. long fucking time, man. What's going on? And I'm playing out other scenarios in my mind. I'm playing out a scenario of if this woman would have had a weapon and she could easily say that these three young black men were threatening her. One of Jordan's friends is a tight end. He's extremely tall. He's a thicker kid. And I believe that if that woman pulls the gun on those young men and if that woman pulls the trigger, I believe that she's never punished. I believe that justice <laughs> is never served. And even if justice is served, mm -hmm. it's not enough to bring my son back. But this isn't just a fear for me every day. This has been a fear for black people forever. My father called me to <laughs> Yo, Chef, talk, bro. He didn't give him the talk. I didn't hear nothing about the talk. Yeah, yeah. man. You should give him the talk, man. Like when you do, when you see a white woman, man, you take your hat off, you squeeze it, you squeeze it up into a ball, you put it on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> and you look down, yeah, make sure you look it down, no, yes, no eye contact. Yes, man. Yeah, no eye contact. <laughs> no eye contact, man. Yes, sir, man. <laughs> Yeah, man, this guy's a nut. This is the guy. This is the guy that's oh, he's on ESPN every day talking about white people. Some white analyst from another station, um, I think Fox or you know, somewhere else, cri criticized the black quarterback. You know the black quarterback who had the 23 um women massage therapist accuse him of rape. Some white guy on another channel said something about that. Nothing major, just like made a little joke about it. He got on Twitter and got made videos and calling the guy out, calling him racist. For his opinion what? on his channel, on his show, about some black quarterback who had 23 open um, sexual assault cases. He does stuff like that all the time. Anytime a white person says anything, he calls them racist and he um, checks them. He like make a video and check them and put them in their place. And he's one of those guys. He's always putting white people in their place. And it's like, well, if that's the case, brother, like, why do you keep doing that? That's dangerous, right? Like, if it's yeah, if it's the way, you, <laughs> yeah, if it's the way you say it is. Why every day are you checking white people and putting them in their place? Like he put white people in their place, like on the show, like even other people on ESPN. He'll tell them, hey man, watch out, watch him lower your voice, man. Watch who you're talking to. Like he be getting like he gets sassy with them white people on ESPN. Like he he, he make it uncomfortable. You ever had you know how everybody be chilling and somebody just say something? It's like, oh shit. <laughs> Yep. You know what I'm like, that, that was uncomfortable. That was like, that. like it's like that. He like that scene in Goodfellas. Remember Joe Pesci? He's like, "Yo, funny. I'm funny. What you mean I'm funny? Funny in like, what he, way? He, <laughs> funny in what way? He he does that on ESPN. The white people on the regular. And it's like, well, if that's the case, man. If 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 this is the if if white people are so scary and so violent towards black people, why you keep doing that? These three young black men were threatening her. One of Jordan's friends is a tight end. He's extremely tall. He's a thicker kid. And I believe that if that woman pulls a gun on those young men and if that woman pulls the trigger, I believe that she's never punished. I believe that justice is never served. And even if justice is served, it's not enough to bring my son back. But this isn't- He needs to move back to the hood. Fear for me every day. This has been a fear for black people forever. My father called me to check on me last night. He obviously called Jordan the day before. 
And there's a story my dad has been telling around me forever, and we actually laughed at it. And it takes on new meaning for me. When 19, 1977, uh, my father was at a fast food restaurant uh, with his girlfriend, his girlfriend at the time, and I know we're trying to get rid of colorism, was a fairer skinned woman, but she was black. But to the white guys in there, she was a white girl. And so they start harassing so she was, that she up, was, Brian, probably. <laughs> exactly. So she, 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 she's not black. She's just a mulatto, man. Like, like, why does she have to be black? Anyway, anyway. In woman, but she was black. But to the white guys in there, she was a white girl. And so they start harassing him <laughs> and they're using racial slurs and calling him. An Who animal. believes in 1977 a black guy couldn't go into a restaurant with his mulatto girlfriend without a bunch of white guys? Cap. With him? Cap. In 1977. <laughs> Yo, this fool uh, doesn't know that. He's got to worry about Sunman killing his kid. More than anybody else, like you don't know that he knows, you don't want. When some people, when some people that talk like this, they usually live like around glider, rich glider people. Of course, they talk like this. Yeah. So it's like it's like I don't know. It's crazy, strange. It's like okay, move back to the black neighborhood. Let's see how like that that that, exactly. that, 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 that talk is gonna turn different. It ain't gonna be talking about the the white woman that was or, or the person that was that they call them. Nick. No, you gonna worry about those N, same n words. It's gonna be on your ass, and it's gonna be like, "Damn, I gotta get up out of here." That's why you don't live in those neighborhoods. You feel me? Like this, this is disgusting, man. Well, he yeah, that's just so much too, though. So let's it, it gets worse. It get, this gets worse. So let's 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 move on. Nineteen seventy-seven. Uh, my father was at a fast food restaurant uh, with his girlfriend. His girlfriend at the time, and I know we're trying to get rid of colorism, was a fairer-skinned woman, but she was black. But to the white guys in there. She was a white girl, and so they start harassing him, and they're using racial slurs and calling him an N-word, and so they attempt to jump my father, and so he jumps behind the counter, and he's looking for something to protect himself with, but it's a restaurant, and all they had was plastic utensils, and we would laugh about that story and laugh about that story, but he said, he said, I never thought that this many years later, my grandson would be experiencing the same racism that... I so let's just say that really happened, right? What happened to you, his grandson is not the same racism. <laughs> he's, the <laughs> he's the bear in a dust up with carrots. Yeah, also the fact that it's being like you know broadcast about on national television on a fucking sports show. Exactly. Exactly, and, and 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 it's just crazy. So one gets attacked by a mob of white guys. The other gets um in an argument with a Karen, and it's and the there and, and and it's more sun men than the than, than the fucking lawyer. <laughs> right, it's three sun men. Who could easily one glider woman? Who could easily just reach through the window and knock this woman into the middle of next week or grab her out of her car? But they're just sitting there letting her call her the n word. Them the n word. This is the, the, both stories are cap. Both stories. Come on, Ox. She could have had a I gun. And so she could have had a gun, Ox. She could have killed them. Point where people are starting to listen, where people are starting to understand who didn't understand before. I believe that the true racists, the people with true hate in their heart, are starting to feel a little bit of the power that they felt over the last few years slip away. So they're going to double down on their racism. What they're going to the double fuck? down on their hate. They're going to double down on their evil. And that's what this woman did. And at the end of Jordan's statement, he kind of lists some of the things that he thought about himself and said to this woman, I was none of those things. His entire life, he has grown up as my son. And it was my job to put him in better situations than my parents could put me. So he grew up in very affluent areas. He went to schools that were predominantly white because those were the schools that- <laughs> he survived. <laughs> And he survived. Think That's about that. Yeah. He survived though. That's his son survived going to all those white schools all this time, man. It's a miracle, man. Like shit, For real. man. <laughs> he didn't get jumped. Yo, this is crazy, bro. He said all that shit. Said, yeah, but they went to all white. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, affluent <laughs> is this cold word for white neighborhoods. So he grew up in all white neighborhoods, lived with the all white schools, but uh, now he's um, a victim of racism um, by his white <laughs> Damn, oh, this is crazy. Oh, and he, was, oh, and he, he was, was born and raised in Marrero, Louisiana. So <laughs> he was about, yeah, about on the mm-hmm. other side of the river. Mm-hmm. The people with true hate in their heart are starting to feel a little bit of the power that they felt over the last few years slip away. So they're going to double down on their races. This is ridiculous. Double he grew up in New Orleans, basically close to it, like with all the shit going on there. there, and he's talking about this. So he's fucking well aware of what's going on. Yeah, if you're from fucking New Orleans, man, yo, even if you're not in the streets, all you gotta do is listen to Cash Money and No Limit. Like, I mean, come on, man. Like, there's I mean, no people way. are getting slaughtered not far from, you know, I mean, all around in that area. It's it, You're immersed in it. There's no way he doesn't know they're evil and that's what this woman did and at the end of jordan's statement he kind of lists some of the things that he thought about himself and said to this woman i was none of those things his entire life he has grown up as my son and it was my job to put him in better situations than my parents could put me so he grew up in very affluent areas he went to schools that were predominantly white because those were the schools that i felt could give him the best opportunity to succeed but he was always treated as ryan clark's son and he's faced racism and he's heard the word, but it never affected him in this way. And I felt like I didn't prepare him for this situation enough to know as a black man, you can't walk up to cars, videos chopping up cars with white people in it. As a black person, you can't. That's all black kids do is walk up to cars and drag people That's out wild. of them. That's, That's like wild. literally their favorite oh, really? pastime is walking up on cars. Press one to give him the best opportunity to succeed. But he was always treated as Ryan Clark's son. And he's faced racism and he's heard the word, but it never affected him in this way. And I felt like I didn't prepare him for this situation enough to know as a black man, you can't walk up to cars. You can't wave down cars with white people in it because your life is not a- Oh, shit. Yo, that's so racist. That's some racist shit, bro. That's fucking no, racist. Really, bro. And now we're going to all racist. pretend like, you know, this is never a threatening situation and this is totally innocent and everybody knows it is. Like, get the fuck out of here. It's your favorite pastime, for sure, because you got, like, the water boys, the squeegee boys. It's not just fucking walking up to them in fast food restaurants. It's everywhere and not, you know. Yeah, and it I all can be used as a that. pretense to, to jack and attack. Yeah, I didn't even think about the water boys. I wasn't even thinking about them when I said that. I'm just talking about like black kids, wherever you go, the people that you hear, the loud people, the people that are taking up a lot of spaces, you call it man spreading or taking up a lot of space or standing and or, you know, people that are taking up space, the people that are loud, the people that are conversating um, stream of consciousness. They're always young black people. They're never like hiding. They're never meek and demure. They're always the ones taking up all the oxygen in any room they're in. And everyone knows that. That's facts. Well, that uh, sister from Chicago didn't know that. Yeah, that's true. But she knows it. But you, you're a glider, so you think she doesn't really know it. She knows it. A sister? Come on. Um, <laughs> she won't date a guy unless he's like she, that. She um, uh, you know, <laughs> pretended she didn't at any rate. Yeah. Trust salute. me, she sees it. Uh, salute the hot fire, man. He says, if little Aka's a girl, then you can name her son Queena. Son Queena. And if it's a little Aka's a boy... Then his name could be Sun Canyon. Or Sonny. Yeah. Huh. I gotta make sure though, because if I name him Sun Canyon, white people don't won't have value for his life or some whatever the fuck this clown said, man. Um this is this is crazy. <laughs> salute to uh, salute to how fire he says, my biggest fear when I leave the safety of my home is a glider queen 
sliding on me and letting off a hundred of them things into my back <laughs> <laughs> while, while simultaneously calling me a suburb. Uh, yeah, man, that's like that's like the most common th- thing that'll happen to a sun teen out in these streets, man. Um, it's it gets better though. It gets better. He's heard no words, way, but it never affected him in this way. And I felt like I didn't prepare him for this situation enough to know as a black man, you can't walk up to cars. You can't wave down cars with white people in it because your <laughs> life is not of value to all of them. I can't and tell you how many times it's happened to me. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed that my child is still here. I um, like it's something would have happened to him that would have broke me. And so for me, I got to do a, a better job. Of, of 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 educating him, and I gotta protect him, because because I I wouldn't know how to live. Jesus Christ! <sighs> it wasn't enough. You didn't get enough liberal hugs, and you didn't get enough fucking white guilt out of this shit. You had to fucking go for the home run. You had to the home fucking, run. You had to fucking try to steal <laughs> home. You got a triple. This is like getting a stand up triple and shit. And it's trying to fucking stretch it into an inside the park home run, man. You ain't shit, dude. Like, come on, man. It's like a heat check, man. He done hit like 10 threes in a row. He pulled up from <laughs> half court just to shit. <laughs> like, dude, you won. You you won. And you still. Like, this is this is indicative of the sun, man. Like it wasn't enough to, you know, call white people out, um, cast aspersions on the entire race because of the actions, alleged actions of this one woman. It wasn't enough to say that they don't care about uh, his son's life, don't have value. It wasn't enough to like, you know, say that, you know, manager, the manager and the woman were just bullying his son and there was son was nothing his son could do him and his friends. He had to go for the clinch. He had to. Which is so weird because we had that sister the other day talking about how like some people don't know about seizing more power than they need and they just they have no <laughs> desire to ever do that. Yeah, man, this is this is wicked what he's doing. He's wicked, man. I mean, he, he he's an emotional guy. Don't get me wrong; he's an emotional player when he's on when he's on the field. But God, dude, this is this is yo, this is not it, man. This is not a good look. Because your life is not of value to all of them, and so I'm 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 blessed that my child is still here. I um. Like it's something would have happened to him that would have broke me, and so for me, I got to do a, a better job of, of of educating him, and I got to protect him because because I I wouldn't know how to live if he would have made it out. And so isn't he an adult? Thank you for everybody that reached out to me, and uh, like I know it's getting better, but it's not better better yet, and better for everybody. And um, you know, like oh nah, he not doing the <laughs> he's having papers. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. Clown. He's apparently a ninety-eight year old black woman. Yo, black people um, know how to put the screws on. Yo, we put the screws on. Especially, yeah. especially when we know we got the gliders. I, that, that's what we say all the time. It's, especially when we know we got y'all, forget about it. It's like 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 Ox said. He won already. It's like he 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 put the screws on. It's like, like, <laughs> mother, like it's crazy, bro. Yo, this is crazy. Y'all would never yeah, apply son, more pressure than necessary, though. Yeah, his son is about twenty-two. I think. I think the son's about. I think at this time the son was in college, so I think the son was technically a grown man. But you know, um, listen, man. He this story started by him going to the producers and telling them the story earlier, because remember, the whole segment is about this. Now to an important story to the tell. The whole one segment. Very personal mm-hmm. to our friend Ryan Clark. 
Ryan's son Jordan and two of his Arizona State football teammates say they were called a racial slur. At you a see what I'm saying? So this was the whole story is about this. So they gave him a segment to tell this story. This isn't like they were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. football and he was like, oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, somebody brought a Whataburger and he's like, oh, yeah, my son was at a Whataburger and blah, blah, blah. This entire segment is about this story. He won. He went to the producer and said, my son got, you know, assaulted, chased around by a white woman. And they said, all right, cool. We're going to create space. We're going to give you a, a, a six-minute block to talk about it on our show. That's a victory. You didn't have to cry. You he also, won. Uh, he, uh, he started his story off when he first started talking. He had, like fantasized about a situation where like a glider woman would murder <laughs> his son and his two friends and like yeah. what it would be like and like he's just running through the scenario in his head like fucking high fantasy. Exactly. Yeah, but he went yeah, but he went as far <laughs> but he went as far as saying that he should have taught his son that just he can't just run up to any car because if he sees the white person in the car. He doesn't know that how those white people are going to react. It, it should have been like he should have gave the opposite. Like you run up on a sun man's car, and you're going you're going to find out. Yeah, <laughs> try using something you imagine every day in every city in the United States. You imagine if a white yeah. dude said, "Hey, to don't approach a, a car full of sun men on TV on ESPN." Forget oh about it. God. Mark Cuban got in trouble just for saying when he sees. Son, teens, and hoodies, he crosses the streets. Remember, he said that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They were talking emotion, about, though, his, yeah, but they were talking about making him sell the team and shit. They were like, yo, he, That's he, was, like, he was like, man, he need to sell the team, <laughs> man. Yeah, real shit. I remember that shit. <laughs> it's like, yo, like, you can't, there, there would be no possible way a white person would say that. Like, we always talk about, they wouldn't even say that. We, that that scenario is impossible for a white man to get on TV and say that. It's impossible. It could never happen. I wish it wasn't impossible. Crazy as hell. Yeah. And that in that scenario of a black kid running up on your car, or or you running up on a black kid's car and getting your brains blown out, is one thousand percent more likely than you. A, a white woman calling you the sun word a bunch of times, mocking you, and then shooting you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I they didn't do just look in at their Chicago. scenario. But think about it. In their scenario, they didn't do anything to the white woman. So it's not like they reached her hand inside her car and then she pulled out a gun. She was bullying them. And mocking them and calling them the sun word, and <laughs> then she was going to pull out a gun and shoot them. <laughs> and, uh, Definitely not. That's just, dude, that just sound like a skit. <laughs> hey, really? That Some lady, Dave Chappelle shit. That lady should get the Medal of Honor. Yeah, definitely. It really sounds like something out of the fucking Boondocks. For wow. real. I'm, I'm 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 blessed that my child is still here. I um like if something would have happened to him, it would have broke me. And so for me, I got to do a, a better job of of, of of educating him, and I got to protect him because because I, I wouldn't know how to live if he would have made it out. And so thank you for everybody that reached out to me. And um, like I know it's getting better, but it's not better, better yet, and better for everybody. And um, you know, like we got to keep, you know, staying together, man, and just doing what we can. Staying together, yeah. If only there was some sort of institution that kept the races separate. Ryan, <laughs> we are with you, man. We are with you. You know what? I'm shocked about. I'm shocked that this guy is a grad too. <laughs> Right. Nah, he does bullshit. He he does bullshit though. He does bullshit. He's a son man. He like you bullshit. I ain't getting down there bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He's yeah, but just yep. to, just to turn the screws on white people, just to you know, just to, they can just both be up there solving, you just make it just twist the knife and shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm shocked that he didn't start. I really am. Some I, old man in our wounds. You have to have like Don Lavoe or so with him. Don Lavoe was with him. Yeah, he definitely would. They both would have been crying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man. <laughs> Ryan, Damn. we are with you, man. We are with you. I thank you for that. I know that was hard. Uh, he's trying uh, to not laugh. They can uh, yeah. about my life and my kids, too. Well, it's not going to matter out yet. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We still got time. Hold on. I thank you for that. I know that was hard. Making me think about my life and my kids, too. They are all we have, our children. Ryan Clark, thank you. Yo, if that had lasted another minute. Bro, what a clown, bro. What something's someone's gotta do something about these white women out here. Yo, if I showed that to my son, if I showed this video to my 16-year-old son, he'd have been like, Why is he crying for? He's like, he's weird. I swear to God, my son I'm like, but why is he doing that for? I bet. Weird. 